starts now. And thanks for staying with 23 ABC News at 830 on this Saturday. I'm Mike Hart. We're continuing to follow that record setting earthquake that is impacting, continuing to impact the area of Ridgecrest. Uh, we're going to tune in right now. A press conference is underway. We have crews there with the latest details on what officials are going to be uh, briefing us on. That's right. We're hoping to get some updated information. 23 ABC Scott Sheehan is standing by with, uh, with more on that press conference that's just about ready to begin. Scott. All right, so Mike, yeah, we're waiting for that press conference to start. Uh, no word yet on when it's going to, but I do have Megan Hughes. She's with the Red Cross. She is the disaster program manager. She was in. She got briefed a little bit, so we'll talk with you a little bit about that briefing. So good morning. Good morning. All right, so as far as the briefing goes, what were you guys talking about inside? So when we get our briefings in the mornings, we talk about uh, dam you know, the latest damage assessment, uh, where we're at for sheltering capacity, uh, everything, basically all the information that they have at the time to give us. As far as Ridgecrest, what was the situation look like up there, especially with the Red Cross in mind? Uh, well, with Red Cross, we are we are ready to serve the community. We have a, a shelter capacity right now of over 500. We have a, a 163 clients in our shelter now, so room for plenty more. We've identified a backup shelter site should that become necessary, and we have uh, supplies for about 5,000 on scene, so we are ready to serve the community. As far as people here in Bakersfield, how can they help in uh, in case you do need more people to go up there? You know, some of the best ways you can support the Red Cross is by making a financial donation. That's the quickest way to get the money to the people who need it so we can buy resources. Um, or becoming a volunteer. You can do either one of those things at redcross.org. As far as um, injuries, did they talk anything about injuries or any other structural damage up there that you guys need to be aware of? You know, it's uh, uh, it's not obviously my area of expertise, expect, expertise but uh, what we're seeing right now is the, the Ridgecrest area has still been very fortunate. Obviously, the, uh, the 7.1 quake uh, did more damage, exacerbated the existing damage that were there, uh, but so far uh, reports are, are very favorable. Moving, looking forward, we keep hearing that there's the possibility of more quakes coming, uh, or at least the aftershocks. What should people know to do as far as if something bigger does come? So we know, you know, uh, again, like after all large earthquakes, there's going to be the potential for uh, aftershocks, some of them larger, some of them smaller. Uh, just people should just be aware, and if they have not already taken steps to prepare, they should do that now. So as far, uh, so right now some of those emergency managers are starting to walk our direction. So I'm going to try to grab one more question and as they still m walk their way over. As far as people that were inside, can you talk a little bit, a little bit about who was in there during that briefing with you? Oh my goodness, uh, there's pretty much uh, an entire EOC staff, uh, uh, representatives from the fire department, police department, uh, Cal OES, uh, Red Cross, uh, various county departments, behavioral health, uh, health services, just you know, gathering all the county resources to support Ridgecrest in this time. Anything else that people need to know as far as earthquake safety and moving forward to better protect themselves? Uh, nope. Now, if you haven't done it already, now is the time to prepare. You know, whether you're in Ridgecrest or here in Bakersfield, uh, it's time to prepare is now because it's fresh on everybody's minds. All right, so I'm going to put my uh, microphone over so we can listen in on this press conference. We'll try to give you a little bit of a wrap later on, but I'm going to put my microphone away, so I'm going to send it back to you guys. All right, and as you can see, the, uh, the officials now moving into position to begin uh, this press conference. Uh, everything uh, motivated uh, by yesterday's, uh, last night's 7.1 earthquake. There were just hundreds and hundreds of smaller uh, quakes that resonated out across the high desert. Following that, officials uh, basically gave as much information as mm -hmm. they could. Late last night said uh, on their Twitter account, Kern County saying we're shutting it down. Uh, just uh, praying for uh, everyone overnight right. and we'll give an update for you this morning. Yeah, hoping to get a little bit more information as to if there's, you know, any uh, injuries. We don't mm -hmm. know of any um, major injuries at this time, That's structure right. damage, as well as uh, potentially some of those roadways that are impacted. And uh, one of the things that you mentioned about the structure damage is so many people had just started to pick up the pieces mm -hmm. from the July 4th yeah. quake. Got uh, many stores, uh, one that you were visiting, uh, had actually gotten everything things sort of cleaned up and back on the shelves and then had to it will has to start all over again this morning some even saying that uh, that they were gonna wait to start the next this round of cleanup yeah in case another one hits yeah that I was there all all day yesterday and that was definitely the consensus uh, everyone uh, all right, let's go ahead and let's in. bring our volume up a little bit here There's and see if we can uh, listen to the Very specific of this details about what's happening out there. 
Uh, Chief David Witt is going to give you some around the county updates, uh, and then we'll take questions uh, about his updates and things that the EOC here is doing to respond. So, Chief Witt. Okay, thank you. Uh, like Megan said, we're going to talk about uh, what we're doing here at the EOC, the Emergency Operations Center is uh, focused in supporting Ridgecrest as well as uh, supporting all of Kern County. Uh, obviously, uh, 34 hours in between uh, earthquakes, we're concerned about future aftershocks and where they're going to be. But we have uh, people in place, people in place out in Ridgecrest and all of our fire stations are staffed right now. Um, we've got multiple agencies, and I'm just going to uh, read down a few of the agencies we have here at the EOC. Kern County Fire, Kern County Sheriff, Public Works for Roads and Building Inspection, Public Health, the health inspectors are um, doing what they do and going out and inspecting the situation. Department of Human Services, General Services, and then obviously Cal OES, CHP, the California National Guard, Southern California Edison, American Red Cross, and then the CAO's office and the CAO himself. Um, I would like to uh, say a few thank yous. Thank yous to my fellow fire chiefs um, in Southern California and to the North. Uh, I'd like to say thank you to Chief Osby with LA County. Um, thank you to Chief Fennessy with Orange County. Thank you to Chief Donis with Fresno City, Chief Terrazas with LA City. Uh, Director Gil Arducci with OES and uh, Chief Marshall now with OES as the fire chief. And so as you can see, it takes a, a very wide mutual aid system in order to, to help with this, but also get ahead of the curve. And we have got ahead of the curve out in Ridgecrest. They're going to give specifics about Ridgecrest between 10 and 1030. But as a county as a whole, uh, we know of uh, no damage outside of Ridgecrest yet. Um, all of our fire stations are up and running. Everybody has power and we're ready to go. Uh, for the vegetation fires, structure fires throughout Kern County. We, um, it feels like we're getting ahead of the curve out there and we're uh, just planning out for all of Kern County. And um, they're doing a tremendous job out there. Uh, Chief McLaughlin uh, with Ridgecrest PD is, is just doing a great job um, with the resources he has. Chief Mitchell with uh, Kern County Fire and their unified system and they're out right now just inspecting buildings and uh, doing a large search. But uh, I know you're going to want to know no known fatalities um, at this time and uh, we're prepared. We're prepared and ready to go and the people of Kern County should know that and feel rest assured that, uh, that we're here to help all of Kern County. And so that's what we're doing here at the EOC and uh, we'll have follow up out in Ridgecrest. Okay, questions? Any major damage or any major injuries so far inside Ridgecrest? You know, we're out uh, inspecting buildings right now, obviously, you know, overnight. You know, it's interesting, uh, you know, everybody wants information quickly and as well as I, you know, I want information quickly when we get out there. But, you know, when you think about it, it's dark outside. Um, we're going call to call to call and um, it's hard to gather that intel in darkness. You know, if you have a fire, you can uh, see that perimeter. You can map that perimeter. You can uh, day or night and so it's a lot easier. But uh, they're out doing, uh, you know, house to house inspections, uh, building inspections. Uh, we, you know, we do feel like there is damage, but we don't know the extents of it yet. Nobody was trapped, um, no major collapses that we know of, and, uh, but we're out there searching. And so Ridgecrest will really focus on that, um, but uh, we have people in place to, um, to help throughout Kern County. And uh, we are obviously concerned about um, all of Kern County as a whole. So that's what we're focusing on uh, right now. Any major focusing locations like the dam, the canyon, or bases? Can you give me closer to the mic? 
Okay, so the uh, the dam, uh, the Army Corps uh, did their initial inspection. They're out there right now. We feel that the dam is safe, and uh, they're doing a more detailed uh, search of the dam right now. Highway 178 uh, is open. However, it's it's best that you don't go through the canyon right now um, for major traffic. You know, I'd go out uh, Highway 58. I'd stay away from the Ridgecrest area in general. Um, any other questions? Are there any roads or any infrastructure damage? There are, um, you know, cracks in roads in different places, and we're assessing. You know, I, I read off a long list of uh, people out there looking. Uh, you know, they're looking at the water lines, the gas lines. Um, no major uh, problems at this time. You know, they're assessing. There's a lot of leaks, a lot of leaks, uh, tributary lines, but. Um, major lines no. At this point right now, uh, how many personnel does the Kirk County Fire have in the Ridgecrest area? We have uh, over a hundred people of our own in the in the Ridgecrest area, but um, you know we have uh, multiple other people from other agencies and so just fire people uh, well over 200 I believe. Over 200 people that's just fire but yes we have you know we have a lot of allied agencies and that's the importance of this is is all of our mutual aid system our mutual aid system is working and, and it's important that everybody understand that uh, no one agency can uh, do this it, it, it takes uh, a group effort and you know when there's a catastrophic event uh, down south we'll be going if another or even bigger one hits are, are we prepared and ready for it Yes, we are. Um, we will be, uh, uh, you know, we have uh, multiple resources. You know, this mutual aid system is not just uh, our adjoining counties. We can reach out even farther, and we are prepared to, uh, to do that. And we're going to hold on to our resources uh, for a while, a while to uh, make sure, you know, like I said, we had a 34-hour space in between the two earthquakes, and, and we're going to be uh, ready for that. And if something bigger happened, we'd reach out farther and all of our fire stations are full and we're prepared to respond all of our engines in Kern County. What's the biggest concern uh, that could be dangerous for people out in Ridgecrest? Well, there's a whole wide variety. You know, I'm not out there right now, and so I would say um, I would lean on uh, the police chief and the IC, the Unified Command out there, to really answer that question. Um, I haven't been out there, but, um, you know, of course, all the life safety issues, life safety of gas lines, uh, building collapses. We know, you know, through the time that buildings are going to get weaker with, you know, a 6.4, a 7.1, uh, you know, maybe it's not a 7.1 next time, but maybe it's, uh, you know, lower. And, and with that, there could be more damage just because structures are weakened. And so we just need to be uh, vigilant. And uh, the community of Ridgecrest is, and they're strong, and they're uh, vigilant people and uh, doing a great job and uh, have a lot of perseverance. Again, no, ma no deaths, no major injuries, no major collapses? No, not that I'm aware of. What's the biggest message you want us to get out? So the biggest message uh, for me and, and all the people behind us is that we're prepared for the, the uh, next event and uh, we're here to help and serve and uh, we'll continue on. Um, you know, we need to continue on with our days, but we need to be prepared. We need, everybody needs to be prepared to have some water, um, all the essentials, you know, food, food and water, fuel, and be prepared for power outages. It's, it's important. It's amazing how much we rely on uh, electrical systems in our day-to-day -day activity. And so you, we all need to be thinking about that. What are we going to do if we can't charge our cell phone or if we can't, um, you know, water, basic essentials, food, water, and cover. I'm Thank sorry. you. Did you say there were outages up there, power or gas? Yes. Uh, well, Ridgecrest area, yeah, there was uh, power outages, uh, minor gas leaks, water leaks. Um, I believe we're... What's the number? 50. Yeah. 55, uh, only uh, 55 people right now don't have power in the Ridgecrest area from what I'm understanding. Um, but you'll find out probably around 10, 1030 with their uh, specific numbers out in Ridgecrest. And so that's, that's the general message is be prepared. And uh, we have a lot of resources in the state of California. And 
I know we have full support from the Office of Emergency Services, Congressman, Assemblyman, uh, Governor Newsom, and his staff, OES. Uh, we have full support, and uh, we feel it, and we appreciate it. So thank you, and have a great day. Great.